Oh, hello friends. Welcome back, mis amigos. We're doing the first lecture of fluid mechanics. Now, before we introduce what fluids and transport kind of is, today we're gonna do a review of some dimensional analysis, okay? And I have a couple videos on my channel regarding dimensional analysis, but I'm gonna do this anyway because this is gonna be your little toolbox, your little key to helping you understand certain terms of physics and really, this isn't about memorizing, this is about intuitively understanding this guy so that by the time you get to other more advanced fluid mechanics problems and topics, then you can use this as your tool belt. So what I have here is I've laid out this brilliant table and I want this to be, your goal is to kind of memorize this, but I don't want you to memorize it. I want you to understand this intuitively. So like I said, so you have this in your tool belt, so these terms become really intuitive. So. What we have here are several terms that you may see in physics, such as mass, length, and time, area, of volume, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, pressure, and energy. Now, if you can, I really want you to write down the variable for each of these, as well as an equation that is associated with this variable. Um, so I'm going to give you one right off the bat. So force, you're just going to write F equals ma. All right. So. Uh, <clears throat> But remember, these are these are vectors. So I really want you to differentiate if it's a vector or a scalar. So force f equals ma. It's a uh, it's a vector equation. Okay. And then the dimension. Okay. So we're gonna have mass, length, and time. So notice how these are the base dimensions. Therefore, the rest of these all should have dimensions in terms of mass, length, and time. And because I know it's not as intuitive as the units, we can start by doing the units. So. Your goal is to pause, my goal for y'all is to pause the video and work on this all by yourself and you should be able to lay this out all by yourself. If not, we'll go through them and make sure everything is intuitive. So, the first one, mass. You'll recall from maybe Gen Chem, mass is the amount of matter in an object. So typical units might be like kilograms, um, so that's going to be the units you use. And then length, okay? I wrote x, y, z to differentiate the spatial dimensions. So length is going to be a spatial dimension. And I want to use x, y, z so we can get comfortable with this type of notation. Because if I have a box, right, in the, three, in the third dimension, it's going to have an x, y, and z associated with it. And remember that the x, y, and z are quite arbitrary, but usually x is going to be horizontal and z is going to be height. Okay? but they're arbitrary, so you have to define the axes, okay? So really, I really wanna clarify that this is gonna be a differential term. So we have the differential of x, differential of y, the differential of z, because we're gonna do some calculus. So some length dimensions, I don't know, uh, what do you wanna do, meters, uh, miles? Oh, see, this is where it gets confusing, because here, mass is m, and we have the capital letter m for the dimension, and here we have m for meters. So to differentiate that, what I do is for the dimensions, I put brackets around them. And then for units, I put parentheses around them. And then for the term itself, it's just gonna be the actual variable itself, okay? So uh, that, can, that might be a little bit confusing, but just careful not to confuse uh, the mass for the dimension versus the meter for the units of length, okay? All right, next time. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna be physicists today. We're just gonna say time is gonna be capital T because temperature, which I don't have currently uh, in this table, temperature is gonna be theta. Okay, so capital T for time, and so you know we're gonna have seconds, we're gonna have hours. That will be some typical units for time. And from now on, I won't write the parentheses every single time, but that's just something for y'all to think about. All right, area. So I already drew this perfect little box here. So we can already say that area is going to be this cross-section. So an example for an equation for area is going to be what? Let's just say x times y, something like that. This going to be cross-sectional area. So therefore, the dimensions are going to be length, length squared. Okay. So this is going to be such as meters squared or centimeters squared. Okay. And do know that this is just a general equation for area, but there's different types of area, such as surface area, cross-sectional area. We'll differentiate those as well. Volume, well, you're going to take the area and move it through the third dimension. So I'm going to say area times the height, or it's going to be x, y, z. Hope this is going well so far. So it's going to be length cubed. 
and so it's going to be also meters cubed or centimeters cubed. All right. Now velocity. Now things are starting to get a little bit tricky because now we're going to be mixing two dimensions, right? So velocity is a vector or a scalar? It's a vector. So the velocity vector, okay, is going to be. Well, if you do in one dimension, it's really not going to be a, a vector, um, <clears throat> but it can be something like the derivative of x with respect to time, or the derivative of y with respect to time, the derivative of z with respect to time, right? It's a rate. Velocity is a rate, okay? And so the dimensions for this is going to be length per time, length per time. Now we're mixing multiple dimensions. And so this is where it gets a little bit tricky um, because you're going to be thinking about velocity as a rate. But if you recall from physics and calculus, we can integrate these differential equations and obtain an algebraic solution for what we're trying to calculate. Namely, kinematics equations, uh, <clears throat> yeah, basically Newton's, Newton's equations. And so it's going to be like meters per second or let's say like miles per hour, okay? And acceleration. Oh, running out of space here. So acceleration is going to be the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And we can plug in one of these guys. It's going to be the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Right? So acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So this is going to be, I'm going to take this, divide this by time. So length per time squared. I'm going to have Acceleration meters per second squared. Uh, it's pretty much all we see unless we do American units. Now force, okay, you can also plug in this. It's going to be mass times the derivative of velocity with respect to time, or mass times the second derivative of displacement with respect to time. Okay, we might be integrating these guys, but notice how this is second order, so so it might get a little bit complicated depending on the differential equations. We'll, we'll get to it. Don't, we'll, that's going to be later on. Don't, don't worry too much. So now we're going to take these dimensions, and it's going to be what? Mass, right? Mass times length per time squared. Mass times length per time squared. So see how we're just, look, now we have all three dimensions in the same term. Uh, this time, I want you to think about momentum in terms of force. So. Right off the bat, if the force uses acceleration, if you recall that momentum uses velocity, I'm going to start with the, oh, let me do the units first. So it's going to be kilograms times meters per second squared for force. Well, <clears throat> force, remember that momentum is what? The integral of force. So I'm going to be multiplying this by time. So we need mass times length per time. So this is going to be kilograms times meters per second. Okay? Kind of going backwards, kind of prime your brain a little bit. So momentum is going to be P, this is a vector, right, equals mass times velocity, or it's going to be the integral of force, okay? Do recall that you can write momentum as a function of force, uh, and as, as a function of time. So pressure, pressure is what? Force over area, okay? Pressure is... So this is another confusing thing. Pressure is force over area. It's confusing because they, they both use P. So what, what is the book going to do? What am I going to do? I'm not going to write P in terms of, I'm not going to write momentum in terms of P. I'm going to just use mass times velocity or the integral of force times the, the uh, time differential. So it's force over area. So now here's the trick. I don't know the dimensions off the top of my head, but what I can do is I can say, I can take this, force dimensions, okay, which is here, so I'm going to just plug that in, so I'm going to say mass times length per time squared, divided by area, so I'm just going to divide this by area, which I know area is going to be length squared, so they cancel out, so it's really going to be mass times, mass per length per time squared, so that's why some typical units is going to be pascals, or it's going to be kilograms per meter times second squared. Okay, does that kind of make sense? Energy. So energy is what gets really tricky, because what is energy? So we have the mass balance all the way down here. We're going to have the energy balance. 
So the way you remember energy, is one of the equations for energy is force times distance, force times distance. So we're gonna write work equal to force times what? Delta x, okay? So that's gonna be the way that you kind of remember it. Just think of work. Work is still a type of energy, but there's several types of energy that we can go over later on when we do the energy balance, as well as thermo. Thermo goes all over the place with all types of energy. Remember kinetic energy, potential energy, then we're gonna have enthalpy, internal energy, okay? But this is the, the point of this video is to keep these in your tool belt. So you can think of work as force times displacement. And again, we can take what we have for these, these dimensions, which in this case, again, is force. So we have mass times, right? Length per time squared, okay? You can still see that. And then times the distance, it's gonna be, well, times another length, this is gonna be squared. So that's why the units for energy is gonna be joules. It's gonna be kilograms times meters squared per second squared. Uh, notice over here, kilograms times meters squared per second squared. Oh, interesting, interesting. So keep that in mind, because when we do some energy balance, we might see some squares. If you recall, kinetic energy, one half mb squared. Look familiar, right? Okay, I hope this is a little bit intuitive. I hope this makes sense. Uh, this is all for this video. We're just doing dimensional analysis. So the purpose of this, remember, is to keep this in your tool belt. So by the time that we see some complex equations, this is already intuitive to you. So if you didn't get all of these down, it's all right. But pause the video, do it all by yourself, do it from scratch. Now explain it to someone else. That's your goal, okay? Flow me to the next video. Should I keep doing that? <laughs> Click here to get to the playlist. I'll put that right there, okay? And then please check the link in the description. There should be some uh, links as well, okay? Leave a comment, share this with your friends. Good luck.